Okay, so welcome to another episode of the Mesmerized Podcast. And today we have Brask. We have the vocalist and composer of the band. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well. How are you are doing? I'm good. I'm good. I've been running around uh, doing adult stuff. Wish I was nice, doing more nice. music, but yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Metal. Or, or very, very metal. <laughs> so, great. Um, let's get started on Brusque. So, from what I've read, it's in relation, the band name comes from uh, folklore, doesn't it? And re- something to do with mountains, is that right? Yeah, it has a lot of doing to, with mountains. Uh, Brusque means uh, dawn in uh, English. You can translate it like, like a dawn. So it's like, you know, when you're high in the mountains, you're sitting on the top and you see this beautiful dawn in the morning. Yeah, so this is where the name comes from. Sweet. So what mate? So you guys write black metal, which is really yeah. interesting. You actually my first you you actually got two firsts on my podcast, one being the first Polish band to be on the podcast, and two also being the first black metal band. So I was really excited when David told me he's like oh uh, i've got a black metal band if you want to check them out I'm like yes yes i want yeah. to interview a black metal band this is fantastic that, and the fact that you also from poland which makes also quite a bit of difference because i know how like i'm i'm quite i i like behemoth quite a lot yeah and mm-hmm. i know like what the um what the relationship is between black metal is with uh with poland at certain points is, has that ever caused you any problems or issues at all uh, no not not at this moment because you know we're still a small band maybe if we were bigger and <laughs> do something like behemoth does uh, but not uh, i'm not nergal so yeah <laughs> uh, i don't think so but it's uh, there, there's a certain atmosphere here when we li- where we live so um, it makes you play black metal i would say we have a lot of bands uh, inspired just by the by the culture that is all around us okay that that's actually really interesting so what 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 does um what does that genre of music mean exactly within that circle if if i'm verbalizing that correctly if i'm using the right terminology yeah, it could be right because um, you know uh, black metal is uh, really popular in Poland. I mean, it's it's most metal bands uh, here. Also, we have other bands too, but you know, and uh, it's uh, it's a big part of culture. Yeah, everyone is uh, doing it. Everyone is uh, listening. So, uh, beside that, um, I think it's the thing with uh, Poland being a big Catholic church. You know, we have. Mm, big pile they put on it so yeah yeah because that, that that's one of the few one of the very few things i wanted to ask as well in relation to because i know uh, poland is very close to its religious roots so to speak yeah definitely so we kind of uh, think against that but uh, with just we we don't care about that, to, to be honest. We don't care about any kind of religion. We just, you know, want to play the music, and it's something we think it's a bit different because many bands are doing it the opposite way. Yeah, uh, like Behemoth, you, you were talking, they are known for doing the stuff uh, with, you know, anti anti catholical stuff. So yeah, it looks like um, this is their part of job. Now we are need to do something our our own. Yeah, so you guys are more a lot. You're you're more a black metal band that's into the whole folklore and just the general sound, rather than like the re- religious rebellious reasoning, like the original like black metal guys like uh, Mayhem and uh, oh god, I forgot um, I forgot the name of the other band now. Um, not uh, Burzum. 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 Yeah, that's oh, yeah. it. Those are the guys I'm thinking of. I'm like, shit, I forgot his name now. <laughs> but um, no, that's, that's actually quite interesting. So, what is the uh, what, what is the direction that Brusk has, which 
would you guys identify yourselves as? Because I know black metal is very rebellious. It's very punk in some ways. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the way I understand it. Anyway, I'm not a massive, like, black metal, urban churches, ah, that kind of metalhead. I just know I'm a very big fan of, like, Venom, like the old black metal bands, like Celtic Frost, Venom. So I know yeah. a lot of it does stem from, like, punk. Like, it's like a it's weird, it's like, it's punk, fresh metal, and then it's, like, faster and more in your face sort of thing so i've gone into a bit of rant there my apologies didn't make any sense yeah it, it makes sense because uh, it, it's quite a funny uh, our drummer is playing in a uh, one of the biggest polish punk bands so we still have roots in that uh, but anyway we we just want to play fast and kind of technical um with with um, capturing the atmosphere so we were trying to get you know some technical riffs some atmospheric riffs and uh, not to stay in the point where where other bands stay. Just you know, not only blast beats, but keep um, kind of keep the the roots still intact. That's why we are inspired so much by the bands you have mentioned before. Fantastic. So, who would you say is the most in? Who are the let's say three most influential bands or musicians to, to yourself? As you said, you're the vocalist and the composer so i'm assuming that a lot of the sound a lot of the actual writing is done by the bulk of it is done by yourself and the other members add their own parts to it if i'm i'm getting that correct yes uh, you guessed it perfectly uh, so it looks like uh, that uh, i'm really big big fan of dissection uh, it's it's one of my favorite bands ever so i do play uh, play right in style of what the section was doing but still uh, i'd like to keep few things uh, from us yeah like give from th a few things from us mm -hmm. and so the second part would be behemoth you you said about them they have certain um, technicality in them so i really really like i like uh, playing by that he's uh, uh, the other guitarist of behemoth and also the third one would be, hmm, let me guess, because I listen to a lot of, a lot of bands, but uh, influentially it may be Opeth, because uh, okay. we sometimes go into the prog realm in the, in the new uh, songs, so I think that, yeah, it will be Dissection, Behemoth and Opeth. Those are actually fantastic answers. Think, having said Opeth, now, I've never really quite got into them. I don't know why, just something that just doesn't draw me into them. Yep. But I'd say early Opeth, or like the first few records where he was doing more screams and things, is almost like soft black metal. In, in, certain, yeah. in certain ways, like if you look at it in a particular way, I guess. But, um, yeah, it it kind of is. It's not that aggressive as the others, but it still have great atmosphere, and you know, it's there's there's something about it. Uh, our bassist is a big fan of them, so he just keep pulling our, you know, bass playing into that realm. Fantastic. Uh, the question I have actually, it's um, I'm always curious about this. It's um, how is Behemoth viewed by? A oh, hello. Are you still there? Hello? Oh, hello, we've got oh, some are... issues. Yeah. Okay. No, I can hear you hello? perfectly now, mate. Yeah, so um, what I was going to ask is, how is Behemoth perceived by the general like Polish oh. like metalheads? So, like, you've got, um, like, as an example, Rammstein, uh, Rammstein in Germany, they're not that big. They're big, but I know there's a lot of people say, oh, I hate Rammstein, blah, blah, blah. Well, outside of Germany, everyone thinks, oh, they're massive. They're, they're one of the biggest bands ever. Yeah, Rammstein is great. But, uh, yeah, how's, how's yeah, you know, I viewed in Poland exactly? Oh, it, it depends. You know, there are mm, two kinds of people. Those who really love Behemoth and appreciate what they are doing. 
and uh, those who hate them just you know everywhere in in facebook groups on somewhere you can see like yeah nergo is doing the, his stuff ha 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 you know making fun of him uh, and yeah it's it's like in between but uh, they have big public here you know they are always sold out uh, concerts and stuff like so yeah i think people really like them oh, despite really of that cool that's really awesome cuz um i mean cuz i've always followed nergo a little bit, just because he seems to be quite one of the more well-known guys within that scene. Yeah, I think like Dimmu Borgia are a big band, but I think Nurgle hits like a higher level. Like he hits the media a lot more than a lot of the other black metal bands. So, because um, Nurgle became quite big when he started dating like Polish pop stars or models or something, wasn't it? Like when yeah, he started going to like exactly. the mainstream. In Poland, which is like the guy's the guy plays black metal. What the fuck? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool. He was dating Doda. She's she's a like you said, she's a big Polish pop star. And you know they didn't survive, but still Nargal is was on on many magazines. You know, known magazines for for fashion or stuff like that. Because of the thing, wow! So, yeah, he, it's pretty good job with that. Wow, that, I I generally find that really impressive, just because of the kind of music it is. It doesn't generally get into the mainstream. Yeah, he. he I I don't know how he did that and why, but uh, no, it it works perfectly for him. That's incredible. So, um, with Brusk, have you guys? Because I had to listen to demos and sound up for, for demos they actually sound really good. I'm, I'm really yeah, impressed you. with how good demos actually sound because they've. Uh, what I find with a lot of black metal is you don't really have a lot of bass. You don't have a lot of, um, what I look for in a good production myself, which is, you know, like a boom, 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 boom sort of feel. Yeah. Which your demos definitely had, which I actually quite appreciated. Because the actual quality was good and didn't sound like what a lot of people do with black metal, which is, okay, cool, let's get this really cheap setup and make it sound like we've recorded this for a potato. <laughs> it almost was recorded with a potato, actually, with barrels. Uh, but yeah, but, uh, thank you. Mm, and um, about, the, about the sound, um, we were aiming for that bit because I said, as I told you before, um, we are fans of Opeth, so we are looking a bit for that proggy, you know, clean sound. But uh, in the same time, we wanted to capture the atmosphere and rawness of uh, of uh, black metal. Uh, so we just um, the place where we play uh, actually lies uh, in forest between the mountains. Mm -hmm. So it's an old hut where where we just uh, doing rehearsals. Uh, so we took the um, drum set, set it up in the um, living room, and recorded there. It's also also with guitars and vocals, so it's it was all recorded almost naturally in in one big uh, room in the middle of the woods. So I think this is a big part of of the sound that we could achieve. But that's really cool and such an awesome story that you can that you can just organically attached to this is that yeah we yeah, it it's, it's, it's so black metal it's fantastic <laughs> yeah. the only thing missing is like dead animals or something or just like uh, there... just a cult of satan it's just chanting outside <laughs> yeah the, there was a live and life animal we had two, two deers and two cats so <laughs> i love it it's absolutely fantastic so um so how, how did Brask get started exactly? I mean, no, I, I was playing in a few bands before, and uh, in adding to the fact that we live here, so uh, it's quite a nice story. I just woke up one day and thought, uh, I'm fan of black metal. I want to do black metal band this time. Uh, and then I walk out to, to my door. And when you turn to the right, you will see big uh, mountains, just like that, because I live 
exactly beneath them. So then I thought, yeah, I need a black metal and mountains. And yeah, I kind of did everything, um, did a few calls to my friends from the past bands and we just formed the draft out of nothing. Amazing. So um, in relation to it, so how long did it take to get like a full band together and start uh, getting things in motion for you guys? Yeah, it was quite um, quite easy because I knew half of the band before. Um, I knew who was uh, who I was uh, talking with. We just couldn't find the drummer, um, but the, the bassist I asked to to play with us. He said like, yeah, you know, I play in uh, some kind of grunge band with this guy, and uh, he's quite quite a good drummer. He actually we knew that he played uh, in punk band, and we haven't been sure for the to the first uh, rehearsal. When he entered the, um, the rehearsal room, he sit, he played a few blast beats, and we were like, yeah, this is this is the thing. Uh, so yeah, it was like, hmm, I don't know, like two months, and we were perfectly ready to go to, to start to uh, rehearse some material. I love that, though. Gr grunge drummers are always yeah. like a big surprise somehow. Like you got Dave Grohl, who... It's like, oh, you know, I'm playing grunge, I'm playing punk, so like it's relatively easy. And suddenly, it's like, oh, yeah, I've done a record with uh, the guy from Venom and Celtic Frost. Like, what? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, what record is that? Um, Probot. Who, who's in this? Because he actually has... Um, oh, there we go, there's my phone. He has quite a lot of well-known, sort of not underground, but like not yeah. really well-known people on there. Let me have a quick google who's on there because i know jack black's in that but oh. it's actually it's surprising what he's managed to do with it uh who's on the record so you've oh, for god's sake there we go it's actually doing the thing i wanted to do um track listing so you have chronos from venom you have max cavalera lemmy from motorhead mike dean from corrosion of conformity Kurt Brecht from Dirty Rotten Imbeciles, Lee Dorian of Cathedral, and Napalm Death. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, oh Wino from St. Vitus and the Obsessed, uh, Tommy G. Warrior from Celtic Frost, <laughs> Snake from Voivod, Eric Wagner of Trouble, and King Diamond. Wow, this is quite a great lineup. I mean, super, super group it's... in this point. It's insane. I think he's only ever... Yeah, that was back in 2004. I think he's only ever done one record. And wow. So I don't even remember who told me about it. But so I said, like, just check it out. Just have a listen. Like, fuck, what? This is yeah. incredible. Why? Why, have I not, why is this not more, no, more well known? I will need to check it out also. It sounds you know, perfectly... It's it's incredible. I I really wish Dave Grohl did more things like that. So I think yeah. I think he's underground at heart, but due to the fact that he's in such a high position, it's like I can't do all this stuff. I'm yeah, just he can do a few help. ones. <laughs> yeah. Like was it? He's, he still records with tape, which I still find insane. It's like, who's got the money to record with tape these days? Yeah, his time and, you know, I couldn't stand it, to be honest. Recording on tape, wow. Super old school and super cool. It, it's like, um, what's his name? Because I know he records it on tape and then it gets, uh, then it gets converted into, yeah, into digital. Yeah. And it's like that gives it a warmer sound or something, which might work it could be just a general perception because oh he's gone through tape so you know oh that's incredible <laughs> yeah. or he, he reamps it I, I, I think he does like a reamp process so it's all recorded digitally but then it goes through the tape okay. afterwards so it has more of a tape feel so it goes from digital to tape back to digital which kind of make which does make sense i guess oh, yeah it but, does uh, to be honest, um, to my experience, it does a lot of sense and sounds really, really better when you do that. Oh yeah, but then you've got then you've got Tarantino, who still records with Super 8, which is like 
so so expensive. I've seen some of the budgets that he has for that, and that's just he's paying he's paying more for tape than he does for the actors at that point. <laughs> yeah, but the tape is important important at this moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, outside of Brusque, what what interests you besides music? Uh, well, that's a hard question because I do only music now. Um, uh, there are a few things. Um, I'm a programmer by, uh, by uh, you know, just not only like a hobby but uh, quite a passion. And this is my uh, day work. Uh, also, I uh, do enjoy some kind of martial arts. I do karate. Sweet. So. Does, um, so, uh, other than that, I just sit and create music. So, I have curiosity because I know a lot of musicians do take up martial arts like karate and uh, Krav Maga and so on and so forth. So, because I know a lot of these martial arts are not just a sport, they're also a way of life. Is that something that ever... Mm -hmm. is, is that something that ever sort of gets into your music at all, in any capacity? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, I think you can... Um, I, know, I know why I like it, because uh, when you're doing it, you can just throw out everything, you know, emotions, you, but not only you, <laughs> you can throw yourself, up, yourself out, and it, it's the same with the music, you know, it's kind of... The, the kind of music we play, we play it because we like the aggression in it. Mm, still, it can be technical, it can be atmospheric, but uh, still you can do this some aggression style to, to the point when you're just uh, exhausted after it, yeah? After oh, um, yeah. rehearsals. Like, like, like an I'm, emotional release. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's, it's really cool to do that. Uh, so yeah, it's karate is just one thing to just to move from the, from the desk and, you know, do something else. Which, which um, you know, it's quite exhausting, but it's also great fun. Fantastic. Have you guys managed to play live at all? No. Uh, sadly, when when the pandemic started, uh, we had a few um, gigs booked, but uh, then everything you know went down, and I was trying actually uh, to get some bookings um, just last week, but still everybody you know. Um, is in a fear that everything will be cancelled. They are cancelling a few even bigger uh, tours and gigs. So yeah, it's it's quite hard right now. But we are still working on our live production and uh, hope to to be ready soon and, and to that, be able to play. And that's fantastic. I mean, we, me and my band, we've taken the same stance at this point. There's no. It's better to focus on recording at the moment simply because. You can't tour, you can't play gigs, you can't play live in any capacity at the moment unless you book a venue and do like a live stream, but everyone's done that now. It's not something that a lot of people ask for. But, uh, yeah, so, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, so are you guys working on more music at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we are actually having two, two, two singles to be released, ready to be released, and we're still uh, working on recording those, mm. and we are thinking about uh, the full length, actually, we have few songs uh, written right now, but uh, we just um, aren't uh, quite, um, uh, I, I lost the word, um, we're just quite impressed with that, yeah? We need something more. Yeah. Uh, and we are looking new ways to, to, to work it out because the um, demo was okay. We weren't, uh, we weren't that impressed with, with the production, to be honest. We wanted something more. Uh, and we kind of achieved that on, uh, on the demos that we do, uh, did for the, for the full length. But still, um, we need to work on it. So I don't know where to when it will be released or anything like that, but I definitely know it will be quite a change, uh, you know, comparing to the demo. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so how are you guys recording exactly? So what's the 
general recording setup that you guys currently have? Oh yeah, so um, it's like we always record live drums uh, because you you can't do many things MIDI in in that genre. You, you can play many great genres with with use of MIDI drums, but not black metal. Uh, so yeah, we play as I described it before. We, we do it in, in just living room, setting up all the mics and recording live drums. Then we go um, this time for the DI guitars. We recorded to um, just through my SPL. I know how it's frontline, something like that. I've got uh, this big box when uh, where you can record really great uh, DIs. Then we will send it to reamping, um, and then we are thinking about mixing between mixing in it by ourselves, like we did with demo, or uh, to you know hire some some greater names to to get it really nice quality that's fantastic it's great to hear that as so many bands at the moment are sort of going out of their way to learn to record themselves so i think what one i think one of the things that's easy is recording guitars and bass and vocals you can record that practically anywhere depending on how you do it of course have you can essentially record that anywhere while well, drums I think drums is probably the hardest thing to record yeah. because if the drums sound like shit, no matter how good your guitar to sound, no matter yeah, how if you've got sounds, a shitty drummer then you've got a shitty album, if you got a shitty drum setup. Yeah. Uh, so um, it looks like like you said, uh, you can't do this easily with drums. There are many variables to which can change uh, during the recording. But it's also quite a fun, you know. It's it's always great to. I, I like this really a lot to set the, all the mics and and get into it. And um, with just uh, sometimes we feel that uh, there are not many things that we could uh, give someone else to do. You know, we we couldn't just hire someone to to record in big, you know, shiny studio. Sometimes we just like to you know set this uh, drum set what we have and just record it like it goes. Oh yeah, because some the thing is, everyone says, "Oh, you need to use studio, you need to use this, you need to do that, 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 and that." However, it all comes down to how you work and what kind of music and atmosphere you want to create. So, as an example, as a punk band, you might want something that sounds garagey, something not part of something very raw. As I'm, I'm assuming that's almost essentially what your looking at as well something quite raw but also not necessarily polished but still clean enough so everyone can sort of hear everything in between yeah that's that's the, the perfect describe yeah you know you can't always record everything with, with the computer perfectly you need to have some kind of that raw sound as you as you said exactly so um yeah, so as you said, you guys might be planning on mixing it. Are you guys looking at having someone else potentially master it at all? Yeah, yeah, uh, we're looking to um, to some of the bigger studios. Like, ah, um, uh, the, there's a, the studio in Poland um, called Hearts. Uh, these guys were doing like stuff like Behemoth, early Behemoth, also uh, Vader, and uh, mainly all the known bands from Poland. And we are thinking about sending um, some tracks uh, to them uh, just to see what they can achieve, you know, with, with our music, just to try it out. And, uh, you know, it may, it may go many ways. It may be worse because uh, it may be quite not the thing uh, we are looking for, but it, you know, can take this to another level. Of course, no, certainly you're completely right with that. So... Uh, what what is the what is the plan for Brusk at the moment? Hey, can you repeat? Because uh, uh, yeah, it's broke what, what, what down. Is, what are the next steps for Brusk at the moment? Oh yeah, so um, we just uh, wanted to play live. Uh, I think this is the most important thing for the moment. But also we are, uh, as I said before, we are starting to you know. Um, take some ideas and uh, do some new music. So 
clearly perfect path for for everybody. Yeah, we'll record, play live, and uh, do some more stuff. Yeah, like uh, new albums and stuff like that. Uh, we'll try to evolve with uh, every every each of them. But you know, you you don't all, always know what what uh, you know, can happen. Of course. I mean, yeah, you, you just have to adapt at this point. Um, the other thing I wanted to actually ask about the band, uh, live-wise, what is your live look exactly? Do you guys go for the general, you know, wearing band shirts, jeans, and all that, or do you go more towards the direction of, like, the early black metal, you know, corpse paint, spikes, that kind of thing? <laughs> Uh, no, so you know, I would like to get some corpse paint, but <laughs> sounds like fun. But yeah, no, uh, we just uh, casually, we are just looking pretty casual on stage. Yeah, we don't uh, wear anything uh, special. It's just um, we're just thinking that you know, music uh, should, uh, should say by its own. You no, know? yeah, should stand by its own. Yeah, just. And it would be quite uh, uncomfortable, you know, with uh, any kind of ropes of stuff like that. I think <laughs> it would just get worse. Oh yeah, no, it's, it all comes down to how you want to express yourself. That that's the way I look at music anyway. For some people, it's great wearing the uh, paint uh, costumes, all that, fantastic. If uh, some yeah. people are more comfortable simply doing that. Uh, some people like to bury their clothes and then dig them back up when they <laughs> play gigs. I, I'm I'm coming out with all the all the black metal references, which is fantastic. I'm loving it. I don't usually get to do them, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, I would love to. Yes, I need to try this. You know, with digging my clothes. In in like speaking of black metal. Because I know there's very much a polarization of this. Have you? I'm I'm sure you probably think like, please don't ask this, please don't ask this. But I'm going to anyway. Have you seen the movie for Lords of Chaos? Yeah, uh, I've seen that. So um, you want to know my opinion about the the movie and whole scene and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, it's quite cool. Uh, I'm. I need to tell you that I quite enjoyed the movie in a way that um, it I knew it won't be portraying the the real yeah, uh, the real um, events that happened. Uh, kind of I I am quite a fan of of that stuff anyway. So yeah, it was quite cool as a as a movie. Mm, and when you viewed it that way, it's it's right. Yeah, it's okay, but. Uh, if you viewed it in the way that um, you know it's like a um, documentary movie or something like that, oh, no, it's, it's <laughs> certainly not. not. To be that. Yeah. To, to be honest, um, no matter what your view is or uh, what anyone's view is of Varg Vikernes, whether you think he's a genius or whether you think he's absolutely insane, um, I did think I enjoyed Lords. Of, personally, I enjoyed Lords of Chaos as a movie as yeah just a piece of entertainment really however i did think it did make it was very much a varg vikern's parody and yeah. i can understand why he'd be upset again completely dis disregarding what people's opinions are of him it did make him and that's the thing. Varg was a very handsome guy when he was young. And the guy... I don't think they got the right guy to portray him, really. I think they hired him specific... Uh, not him specifically, but someone like him to get under Varg's skin, possibly. But Yeah. It, I could be reading too much into it and just happens to be someone that will piss Varg off no matter what <laughs> yeah but uh, but uh, as far as i know uh, it's the truth actually vark even did say that he was really pissed off uh, when he had uh, the youtube channel because he was taken down uh, he, he's been taken down so many times i remember when i had my other podcast i didn't know who vark vikens was at all 
at the time. Um, I've mm. only over the last like two, three years looked further into black metal because I think the only thing that I've watched black metal wise beforehand was the really awful documentary about the guy from Gorgoroth, the true black metal, which you can find on YouTube. Oh. And it's just like, it's, it's garbage. It's so, <laughs> it's, it's so horrible towards him as well. It's like, oh, he locks up gay people. He beats them up. So, but he is gay. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's, no, it, it's one of the very few things. Where, like This is clearly someone who has some access to media and abuses that just to have a laugh or something. It's, it's a bit pathetic, really. But, um, so I've, I've gone a bit off rail there. Um, we talk about loads of chaos. Oh, um, I was going to say, was it McCorney Culkin's brother? I forgot his, I forgot his name. Uh, the guy that played oh, Euronymous. Kevin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the one. I can't remember his name also. I know he's the little one looking like... Uh, he looks too much like his brother as well. He's got yeah. the same eyes and everything. He's like, shit. I saw the poster saying, like, um, you know, Kevin 3, like, lost in Oslo. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. But I, I think he actually played his role quite well. I think the one part that made me laugh the most is when he gets really jealous of Varg. And he's like, how does a guy fuck so much? It's like, what? Why is this being shown? This is... What? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, this was... This was really... Not not on the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really cool. Yeah, he did a great job, as he said. He was awesome. But uh, the guy playing Vark also did a great job in pissing him off. So <laughs> everyone <laughs> did great. But that's the thing. The guy who directed the movie was in... Fuck. What, what film Bathory. Was it? It, yes. Yeah. Bathory. Because he, he was in there and I think... Um, because it's based on the book Lords of Chaos as well, so it's like it's really interesting to see that someone from that viewpoint, someone from the outside viewpoint who has helped create or at least influence that scene in some manner, then like put his own not his own spin to it, but uh, create his like create a story on how an outsider would view it in some way. I think it's probably... I, I can imagine that entire story must have been... could have been completely... Uh, could have been far more extreme than it was portrayed and a bit less yeah. comical. Um, I think how he wanted to portray it, he got that correct because I think all he wanted to show is that it's a... It's a series of events of a certain group of young people which has just gone too far. I think that if I think that's all he wanted to do with that, which I think he portrayed perfectly well in the entertainment medium that he has chosen to do so. Yeah, he he did a really great job with that, with um, using his you know his point of view, but uh, it also. It also shown the the bit of uh, story you couldn't think about before, because um, we know as it's uh, told in a in a in a um, title that it's based on truth but also on lies and um, yeah it really shown the, the 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 other side of the, of the events yeah so he did a really great job in that exactly so in. So I've completely lost my train of thought again. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, no, like, generally, black metal is a very interesting kind of music anyway, because it's, there's not really a set of, I think black metal has become very popular in, like, mainstream metal, so to speak, over the last, sort of, three, four years. I think Behemoth is one of the bands that has made it a bit more mainstream all, altogether, really, which is quite ironic considering the guys who created black metal in the first place were, like, super anti-commercial. Yeah. Like, no money. It's, like, it's all about music. 
It's all about uh, it's all about the extreme message and the shock factor. Which... Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, and you know, you mm, you can't quite uh, these days. You can't uh, shock anyone. You know, there's there are not so many things that quite uh, could shock anything because we have internet, so we can't go Google anything, and you know, you will see it anyway. Uh, and it's it's really mm, fascinating how it happens that black metal still thinks about it because there's a band um, Gua you probably have heard of it's one of the biggest also from band from Poland and they are still keeping that um, low profile thing uh, when they when they you know just releasing the albums not promoting it any way they just you know release new stuff and don't care about the other things yeah, so it is really interesting, especially I think a lot of the visual side has melted into like mainstream metal. Like look at a band like Ghost as an example. They look black metal as fuck, but they sound like um what was it? They they sound like a hard rock version of the Doors. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect description. I mean that, that's the thing actually with um with Ghost because I've I've read a few interviews with Tobias and he says how we influenced by the doors he is. Then I've listened yeah. back to Ghost and I'm like, fuck, there's a lot of doors in this. This is actually a bit it's a bit close. Yeah, but you know, they did also did a great job on doing that and you know to commercialize the, the look. Bit and yeah, it's also quite quite a fun story of Ghost. Yeah, because you, I think, um, what's the pop star called again? Poppy. She uh, started using like the black metal face paint at one point, which in itself was actually quite interesting when you get down to it. I didn't think much of the record, didn't really do anything for me, but it was interesting to see uh, the black metal look actually go into pop music yeah pop is quite a you know event <laughs> if we can call it that uh, you know it's it's not a normal thing but she mixes so many styles and genres in in one music it's like so uh, i don't think that um corpse paint uh, there on her face it's it's a bad thing necessarily it, it's quite a good it does a good good job in there it's it's interesting to see because again, like black metal, I think is one of the last types, uh, the last type of music that is really pushed. Like the because I, the way I look at, it, you've got punk the music, and then you've got punk the spirit. So first you had punk, then it went to thrash metal, uh, then you had death metal, and then it's gone to black metal. So it's almost like the the anarchist. If that makes sense, a punk attitude is yeah. the anarchy an attitude, which I think you've not really had that since black metal, really. I think black metal was the last genre that has really pushed that envelope. You've got hip-hop and rock. Uh, yeah, you've got hip-hop and rap, which has done it a bit. It's It's touched on it, but I don't think it's ever pushed it within the limits that black metal has, but I guess black metal did go quite far, considering what has happened. Oh yeah, these guys were nuts, uh, definitely, you know, they go over the edge uh, with that, but um, yeah, it's oh, it, it's hard to do podcasts with you because it's hard to not to agree with you, because you know, you, you, you are gonna have a right with that. Um, no, it's 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 about the spirit, and um, you see it uh, less and less these days because there are too many bands, and uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, like too many things that can still shock you, that can to uh, keep the spirit up uh, within one band, uh, you know. So they they see the money and they go for it. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. It's it's difficult enough to make a living from a band these days but yeah i think the other problem with a lot of it is and i 
see this quite a lot from people that I talk to, people from around. Band, a lot of bands don't even try anymore. Like, a lot of bands feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to play music, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But they clearly have, a, a lot of people clearly have some kind of desire that they do want to do music for a living, which a lot of bands don't want to push that for some reason. I don't know if they're scared to do it or what it is exactly. I don't know. There are many things. Uh, I think you have to have heart to, to do this uh, no matter what. Hmm. Because, um, you know, in Poland there's a, there's a thing. We have um, many, many bands uh, that always uh, enjoying any everything that is uh, quite commercial. They, like they are like copycats, yeah? And they yeah. copy the newest, the freshest thing. And they think that um, it will give them, you know, all the best, all the money in the world and fame and stuff. It, it not works like that. I think you, you have to just, you know, push through through all this stuff and uh, that's the thing you need to to do this because it's possible, but, you know, tell me how. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the f- in the day with, um, with music, it's such an emotional thing for everyone involved, for the people who write it, the people that listen to it. It's, it's, you can look at it in, it like a business which is fine you can manage it to a certain degree but you can only have so much expectation with it. you can only plan so much like what what yeah, you, that... what, what people write they might not buy it as simple as you people might not write music that they want to buy or so on and so forth really yeah it's always like that you know and all this was, was, I think, you know, it it wasn't easier back then and it isn't harder right now. It's just, you know, it, it takes a certain um, certain kind of, um, you know, uh, dedication to that. Oh, yeah. I think all, all that's happened nowadays is people have found another excuse because how they've not made it or how they've not put enough time into it, etc., etc., like, oh, I, I blame the streaming services. I blame this, I blame that. There's not... Oh, yeah. But that, that's the way, yeah, I, that, that's the way I see it. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm not big in any capacity. I'm still going to try. But it, yeah, but it's a clear view. It, it looks like that. Uh, anyway, you know, it's like... But it's like with everything. If, you know, it's something that's wrong, it's not me, just the world. They didn't want me to succeed, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. if if you don't try, it's not going to happen. Simple as and that. That's with anything. That's with relationships, jobs, music. Yeah, just the way you know, thinking and doing stuff, uh, not talking about it. <laughs> exactly, and you're completely right with that. Um, I think it comes down to the attitude that people have like um i think a lot of musicians are scared of oh no i need to do you know business stuff i need to do paperwork for music to get anywhere oh no what am i going to do um or it's like oh i I don't want to you know get a record label because that's going to mean i might be official or pr or anything like that which i don't I personally don't understand that mindset. I think it's like you, you're creating something that you love and something that you want to do. Why wouldn't you want to do this all the time? Yeah, definitely. No, and um, I also don't, don't understand that because, uh, you know, if you've got a chance, if you get a lab, label uh, that can help you, you know, it's uh, why not? You know, they can help you spread. If something goes wrong, you go your way. You you, I don't know, write more music maybe because uh, that's the point. To write it, to get it out there, and to get um, some reaction to it. Yeah. Exactly. That that's that's a perfect way of putting it. You want to get a reaction out of it. Um. Now, what reaction you're looking for? I don't think I think that's where a lot of people get the biggest problem is they're not getting the exact reaction that they imagined. Just sit back, yeah, release it, and 
get a reaction, fantastic. I think that that's one of the hardest parts to do at the moment, is getting a reaction simply out of the fact that there's so many bands, there's so many people, and everyone thinks that there's one way for you to succeed. There isn't. There's so many different ways to do things. Um, you, uh, Some people are best doing everything themselves. Other people are better off having labels, PR, um, and having like a whole team. Yeah, it uh, always works like that, you know. But I think there's, uh, there always was and there will be uh, you know, certain uh, amount of... Um, I don't know, skill to 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 get uh, to see the things uh, from the other side. I mean, um, when you look uh, for the people that succeed in m many things, not only the music. You know, it's always about um, finding the new way. So you just need to to these days find a new way to get to the people. And I think that that's another part where people have to get creative, which is both a good and a bad thing, because. Um, I think music right now has a lot of, you need to engage with people visually quite a lot due to social media. And bands that don't do a lot visually struggle. I think bands that don't do social media struggle quite a lot, I think. Yeah, yeah, the, the bands you know, these days are just more focused on, on playing this and um, trying to get somewhere like um, it's like you know we have the social media we have uh, many tools I mean too many tools sometimes yeah. but uh, you need to use them because um, back then you could just I don't know send a letter yeah pack it send send the CD to the to the record label and wait uh, and they would do the other stuff they um, you know they can but these days uh, you need to be everywhere so, oh, yeah. so you need to be aware of it, of how it works, and just to get used to it. Exactly. I think, and I think that that's what actually going back to the point I was making earlier about black metal getting quite popular. I think it's because there's such a visual aspect with it, specifically from the first wave of black metal, because you had a very simple, like photography and artwork, but you had a lot of tricks, like photo tricks, like uh, you know, like filters and things to create a certain imagery and atmosphere. So I think a lot of black metal is very hand... It, it's very artistic. It's a very artistic genre where you have um, a certain... You have a certain atmosphere sonically and also visually. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, um, these bands succeeding these days are mostly the bands uh, that we were talking about. You know, like Behemoth, they have a really big theatrical uh, style to them, themselves. Yeah, where, the, where they are playing live, there, there's fire, there's a lot of um, things. Also, um, Rammstein. Uh, I saw Rammstein last year. Oh, and so lucky. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was quite a great uh, gig and... Um, it was really fun because they had this like you know theatrical like they were like actors in the theater, but in the same time they were playing perfectly their their music yet yeah? so it matches perfectly with within each other yeah. And that that's a that's one of the things that I love about music. It's so it is and end of the day any art that is created is is entertainment in some manner. I think a lot of musicians don't like to admit that it is. Like, um, I remember watching an interview many, many years ago where, who was it? You had Ronnie James Dio, you had Rob Halford, and you had Bruce Dickinson. And they were talking about how influenced they were by opera. So they created different costumes live and create all these visualisation because opera wasn't just music it was this entire production which was so entertaining to watch if you didn't like the music fine but this sort of story you still have uh everything else al along with it like the costumes and the movements and ev yeah everything that goes with it 
yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's really great. Uh, I think also it, uh, like I said, uh, that you know the entertainment part. It's it just uh, these days it's just everything because you have you know you have artwork. This is uh, art of some artist uh, that is painter. Yeah, you also have uh, like music videos. You need artists, real artists, to create something great for your music. And also for the live shows, yeah, you also need uh, great people with ideas to create great live shows. Because um, I do this stuff like um, sometimes I, if I don't like the band, yeah, I'm listening to the band, I don't like it by a CD, I just go to see their uh, their live show. Because if it's great, it also always you know gets me back to the to the CD. So yeah, you can win a lot of with this. Oh, exactly. I think. Um, from the example that you gave earlier, Ramstein, a lot of I know a lot of metalheads that don't particularly like their music, but they'll still go to see them live purely for the amazing live show that they have. Yeah, it's a great experience. It's you know, it's quite a good thing to do. You know, to 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 give the another chance to the band uh, just to go and see them live yeah because they're putting so many work so much work in that yeah it's it's really awesome yeah because you have i think that's one of the things that punk does very very well i think it's something that punk music has done very well for a very long time which is creating an amazing show with practically no budget whatsoever yeah, you know, uh, I do remember some punk, punk gigs where, you know, there were people on the stage uh, crowd surfing everywhere, you know, and it's it's uh, it's also part of this. Yeah, it's also part of, um, you know, creating this um, atmosphere life where you have this um, amazing music, which is really aggressive, but then you match it with with a perfect atmosphere of a live concert. Yeah, it's really awesome. Exactly. It's like... No, I mean, music, music is an incredible thing when you get right down to it. I think it's not. I think in general, art doesn't get appreciated as much as it should. Because um, I think it was Robin Williams, the actor. I'm, I'm sure it was one of his quotes, something along the lines of, yes, being an engineer and a doctor is extremely important. However, it doesn't mean it means more than. Um, artistic works how how would you you know what what quality of life would it be without music without films without art without yeah without like poetry etc etc it'd be very very boring yeah you need that because you know it's it's a perfect balance between the things uh, you need to go to study stuff like engineering and stuff like that. You need it to, to live, yeah, to create and go forward. But uh, then you've got the, the art which can, you know, inspire you to do that things, to think the, you know, in a really creative way. Yeah, so it's it's also kind of art. It it always matches perfectly. Exactly. I mean, every, everything has m most things have meaning in some manner. It's you just need to find what it is, what kind of meaning it holds to you as an individual. Yeah, it's a it's a great journey called life, I think. Exactly. We we've gotten very philosophical. Usually, my podcasts are about you know like arse and dick jokes. This has oh. actually been a rather serious podcast for once. I'm sorry for not bringing that kind of stuff. That's perfectly fine. I actually enjoy discussions Next. like this from time to time. Yeah, cool. I mean, I can always, I can always, you know, go Joe Rogan and start talking about drugs if you prefer. <laughs> no, no, it's it's quite okay like that. So, I was just about. I've had a question. I've forgotten it completely. I do apologize. It's been a very long day. Um. So, what? Actually, what was your first experience of black metal exactly? Oh, I actually I don't remember um, the the first band, um, but I do remember it was on the tape. It's really old, uh, some kind of demo. 
I don't even know where from. Mm, it could have been some kind of Mayhem, but uh, I could be wrong with that. So yeah, it was, you know, just uh, me, two speakers and two, this really old, gloomy sounding black metal. Fantastic. Is So, actually, I've, I've got a very good serious question to ask in regards to Brask. Or Brask. However you want to pronounce it, it's correct. Because that is art. Um, with Brask, what is your what is your ultimate goal with with Brask? Like, t take um, take reality out of the equation. What what would be the ultimate goal with the band? I don't know. To be honest, I never thought about that. I just um, I'm just thinking about playing music still you know just doing that and uh, don't care about the other things if it w will work it will be cool you know but you know it will be cool like for the every succeeding band to play for a lot of lot of people just that sweet so you know one day might might see you open for abbath or the current mayhem yeah, it could be fun I can wait for the backstage on that geek. That'd be fun. Who actually, go, going from that, what would actually be the ultimate band for you to open for? Like, who would be, who would you love to op open for exactly? Oh, that we should get to a festival because you know there are so many bands I love. <laughs> uh, but I do think, yeah, it will be Mayhem at this point. Really great bands, really big inspiration for for us as a band. So, yeah, I think it would be Mayhem. Fantastic. Um, with uh, yeah, I think I've run out of questions at this point. Uh, so, the last question I do actually have, um, because we are. I think getting to the end of the podcast, really. Um, are there any announcements you want to make? Any um, shout-outs you want to make before we finish at all? Oh, yeah, let me think. Um, uh, I would like to um, thank, uh, first and most, uh, for the David Polito who got us here. We love you, uh, David. You're amazing. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, and the best. And um, the next thing would be you. Thank you for having me on this oh, podcast. And thank you so much for coming on. I've been very excited to actually have you on. Yeah, and, uh, I think that that's all. You know, you can't have uh, too many people to, to thank. You know, it was to be too busy. Of course. And. Yeah, so with that, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. And this was Brask. Don't forget to follow them, and buy their music, buy all of their music about five times. That, you know, that'd be fantastic. And we will see you next time on the Mesmerized podcast. <laughs>